Hey friends, today we are hanging out in Epcot. I've been cooped up in my house for the past couple of days because of Hurricane Milton and I was very fortunate enough not to be affected by it that much, but my thoughts and prayers go out to anyone that was affected and I figured I'd get out and get some air and do a lap around World Showcase. It's still food and wine festival and there's tons of food and wine that I haven't tried yet and I figured I'd make a video and share my experiences with you. So we're going to ride some rides, eat some food and have a beautiful beautiful Epcot kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. It's surprisingly a beautiful day here in Epcot, considering the fact we got hit with Hurricane Milton just two days ago. The temperatures are in the high 80s. We got some wind and I'm excited to just go do a lap around World Showcase snacking around. Like I mentioned, I was very fortunate enough not to get any damage from the hurricane on my home. And I was going to show you guys some of the uh, parks and let you know what it's like after the hurricane. But it's been like a full day and they've got everything back to normal. One thing I did notice, the crowds are definitely down a little bit. I checked and the highest wait time of the whole entire like Walt Disney World Resort was 60 minutes for Slinky Dog Dash. Everything else was like 5 minutes. And I figured, uh, why not come out to Epcot, enjoy the weather, because it's just been rain and wind for the past like two or three days so this is a nice break I think we're gonna make our way straight to World Showcase. I wish they had more spooky Halloween things here at Epcot. There's not really much to show you for the Halloween season, uh, but I am wearing a fancy Halloween shirt. And uh, as I was making my way, I stopped here and I noticed that they uh, shut off the uh, upwards waterfall. They usually have a waterfall that shoots upwards, but they must have shut it down because of the hurricane. This is the Halloween shirt I was talking about. Look at it, a Disney Halloween Roosevelt's collection. And I absolutely love a couple of really good shirts in the collection. If you guys want, I have a code in my description that gets you 15% off your first order if you wanna buy any. And speaking of Roosevelt's, I'm gonna be at New York Comic Con next week. Uh, Saturday, I think October 19th, I'll be at the Roosevelt's booth from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So if anybody's come to New York Comic Con and wanna come by and say hi, I'd love to talk to some of you. I want to switch things up this time and make my way towards Canada instead of towards Mexico because I wanted to stop at the Swirl Showcase and try the liquid nitrogen frozen sweet potato mousse with candied pecans and maple caramel sauce. I just love sweet potatoes. I love how they make this sweet potato mousse. It's really cool. Look at it. And then they smash it. It's freezing up in there. Scoopsy potato. <laughs> Wow, that's an art form. Look at how cool this is. I love the way they prepare it, how they give it like a nice little smash. And it kind of gave me a reason to say Scoopsy Potato because she was like scooping up that sweet potato in there. But now I think we're gonna dive in. Get a little of the pecans, get a little bit of everything in one bite. This has got a very unique consistency to it. It kind of reminds me of sweet potato casserole ice cream, but with the texture of pudding. You know what I mean? I think it's very, very interesting, and I, I kind of like it. I do like this a lot. I kind of wish it was just a regular sweet potato, just smashed and topped with pecans and marshmallows, just like Texas Roadhouse style. Man, I love their butter. Like, you know, their dinner rolls and they have that butter, so good. But honestly, I would get this again. I would definitely indulge in some sweet potato mousse next time. It's definitely quiet enough that you can hear the music going around World Showcase. And I could just sit here and snack on sweet potato mousse all day. This is very relaxing. I haven't been able to experience a lot of this year's food and wine festival. The first uh, day that I came out and made a video, I was with my mom, Bonnie, and Ariel, and uh, we were doing a lot of stuff that they wanted to do, but also snacking around. So today I'm excited to come back and, you know, try some of the things that I was eyeing up on the opening day, you know? Like this was one of them. I was eyeing up, and I think my mom wished she got it too. Now I kind of wish she did. Like she did, she would have liked this. Enough of this sweet potato business. I think we're just gonna keep moving along and try to make our way over to the American Adventure because I want to get something from that food stand. 
I don't mean to jump around so much. Like I said, I already came and tried some of the food uh, here at the Food and Wine Festival. And today I just want to go back and try the things that I wanted to try that I didn't get to try. And my next stop is the American Pavilion, which honestly is actually a really good spot this year. I love all the food that they have there. And uh, the Eat to the Beat concert series has been amazing. Yellow Card has been here, Simple Plan. And I think tonight we the Kings are playing. So we might uh, get to watch a little show, a little snack and a little show here at Epcot. I haven't been able to see any of the shows for this year's Eat to the Beat. I know Joey Fatone was just here the other day, and I think they have multiple show times, 5.30, 8.45, uh, 6.45, and then 8 p.m. So that's not too bad. Maybe we'll catch it. It looks like the first concert's at 5.35, so I think we'll have enough time to grab a hot dog and then come back and see the show. And I'm excited because We The Kings just made a cover of Go The Distance for Disney's pop punk album. So I'm hoping that they play that along with Check Yes, Juliet, because I feel like that's like, you know, the most popular song. But it's always good to see a free concert in Epcot when you're walking around. The Flavors of America is all about the hot dogs this year. They got the New York style, the Chicago style, the Carolina style, the Southwest style, the fresh baked chocolate pudding cake style. But I don't know which one I'm going to get. I think I might go, you know, Chicago style because I'm not too uh, fancy of a lot of the toppings on the other ones. But I think the Chicago style I can do. I opted in to get the Chicago style dog only because I love Chicago. Not too long ago I went out and I made a video just exploring the city and I learned a hard lesson not to order a hot dog plane. I ended up going to Award Wieners or the Wiener Circle. That's what it was called. The Award Wieners is in Universal but the Wiener Circle and I ended up uh, ordering a hot dog because I normally don't like anything on my dogs. I like them just a plain dog, hot dog and bun you know uh, but uh, they didn't take that too kindly in Chicago so I was like you know what I'm gonna try a true Chicago style dog and uh, I ended up getting one and I was like okay I see why they like it it's the combination of the flavors I'm just not that into mustard and you got to have the poppy seed bun look at that look at that little poppy seed this isn't a bun though this is like a, a lobster roll bread or something we're going in honestly I was expecting the hot dog not to be that good but it's got some good snap to it, and it's not like your regular glizzy here at uh, Disney World. It's something fancy, and I like it. I like fancy dogs. Honestly, I kind of really love this bun because it gives you the perfect ratio. I always feel like there's either a leftover hot dog or leftover bun on most setups, but this one, you get a bite of hot dog and every single bite with the bun. It's like the perfect size. More, more hot dog buns should be like this. I think that's the only Luminous Symphony of Us merchandise I think I've ever seen. There's a magnet, a little ornament. The ornament's not too impressive, though. <laughs> the shirt's nice, and I, I, I honestly wouldn't mind getting this hoodie. Oh, look at it. It says it right on the top there. That's actually really nifty. Well, I'm glad that we got to try the Chicago-style hot dog. And like I said, it was pretty good. Now I think we're going to go uh, catch the show real quick and keep moving along World Showcase. And then I want to ride a ride or two. Maybe do Frozen or Mission Space, says no one, but maybe me. <laughs> Just in time for the show. And look, there's even like spots open up front. This is not our song. Actually, you know what? It is our song. If you've never heard of it, and you're like, oh, wow, I love this song, it's because it's from We the Kings, and it was not from somebody else. From a Disney movie named Hercules.
that was a great show and I love that they did go the distance I mean, it's one of my favorite like songs of all time and it's cool to see a different like take on it and that whole album is amazing if you haven't had a chance go check out the uh, Disney pop punk album new found glories on it and, like some of the best bands covering some of the best Disney songs and I've been listening to it nonstop. I absolutely love it we're gonna keep moving along but I don't know why it got so busy out of us like nowhere got super busy look at it over here I mean this is usual festival crowds here but uh, it wasn't like this all day up until this point this is the busiest I've seen it I'm starting to think that a lot of people are just like walking around and not riding rides right now because they've been cooped up in their hotel rooms for the past couple of days you know especially the people staying here on property at Disney because they closed the parks and they even closed like the the restaurants inside the resort they were selling peanut butter and jelly and loaves of bread uh, during uh, the hurricane itself so that people could have food uh, but they probably just want to be out about walk around eat so that's why World Showcase is probably so packed because everyone just wants to be active we made our way down to Norway, and I was going to stop at another food and wine booth, but there's none that uh, are catching my eye. Made me think, why don't they have a uh, festival booth for Norway? Like, they never have a Norway festival booth. I think it'd be fun. You can get some school bread or some other really awesome Norwegian treats. I think that would be nice. Maybe uh, there's a good reason, though. I'll have to look that one up. Or if any of you guys know why they never have a Norway booth, uh, let me know in the comments. I mean, maybe they did in the past. If they did have it in the past and you guys remember, let me know. But I don't remember ever seeing one. Since we made it down to Mexico, I uh, kind of fancy myself a Grand Fiesta tour. And uh, maybe uh, ride this as our first ride of the day. And then over to Mission Space. I don't know why I'm so, like up to riding Mission Space. Normally, you gotta try to convince people to ride that ride, but like whenever I don't ride something for a long time, I start to kind of miss it. And even though that one doesn't make me feel that great afterwards, like Mission Space really is one of the worst rides for anyone that gets vertigo or gets sick because it just spins you around and around. They even have uh, like the, the barf bags. I didn't want to say it like that. I don't know if there was a proper term, but it was definitely barf bags inside Mission Space. Uh, just in case anybody gets sick. Uh, so we're going to try to ride it after the Grand Fiesta Tour. Well, I think that's a strike and a miss for the Grand Fiesta Tour. I usually uh, like to rely on this as, you know, the quick and easy to get on ride. But right now it's looking like a 30-minute wait, 30, 35-minute wait, especially when it's outdoors like that. So on to Mission Space. I mean, I'm all for the Grand Fiesta Tour, but that was like a 30-minute wait. I mean, I, I think the ride needs more love than it normally gets, but at what cost? I usually like it when it's a walk-on, you know what I mean? I wish I got to ride the original Grand Fiesta Tour. I think that would have been cool, even though I love Don de Esta Donald, uh, but uh, I would love to see what it was like when it first opened. All those puppets and stuff like that. Down at the Lakeland Antique Mall, I think they actually have one of the like puppets or animatronics from the original original Grand Fiesta Tour. I, I don't even know if that was the name of it. Uh, and it would be cool. That'd be a cool thing to add to uh, my little collection. I was going to make my way up to Mission Space, but I forgot that I wanted to stop at the Mexico booth because they have a traditional Mexican cornbread topped with chocolate sauce and queso fresco. Cornbread, chocolate, and queso. I want to try it. Here it is. This looks absolutely amazing. It's like cornbread pudding with chocolate sauce and a little raspberry. And the queso is just like sprinkled cheese on top of there. But uh, I think we're gonna dive in. Take a little corner over here. Oh wow, lots of chocolate. Another excellent dessert. And it actually has corn inside the cake itself and it's warm. So it has that bread pudding texture, but with cornbread, I love this. I think this is a great treat. I probably would put this as uh, one of my favorite like uh, snacks at the uh, Food and Wine Festival this year. Just from one bite, one bite, that's all it takes. And plus I'm sitting here eating it. I got Spaceship Earth on the back. I'm banging on a trash can or eating on a trash can kind of loving today it's a good day is that a plane i'm taking my cornbread on a little walk with me over to mission space it's a nice night for a walk mind if i join you i hope i'm not the only one that likes to sing to my food especially after you're about to eat it you know at least send it off with song 
enough of the cornbread business. I think it's time for our mission to start. Mission space. Five minutes for the less intense. That's the one we want. <laughs> Here it is, Mission Space. They have the less intense version, which is the green mission, only a five minute wait. And then they have the more intense version, which is uh, the orange one for 25 minutes. And honestly, I'm going green, not because of the wait time, but because of the motion sickness and the spinning. And I just love this ride, other than the ride itself. I love the outside of the ride. Like this is so beautiful. I love when you go in there, it's like you're on a great mission. The music starts hitting. It gets very quiet in here. We're about to go to space, baby. I also feel like I stand tall when I'm walking in here, especially when they assign me my position, you know? This really gives me Epcot vibes, 100%. Look at that. That's all the orange line over there. Green line, we get to just walk right on. In the queue, they have photos of all the people that have been to space before. Like this one, the first man on the moon, July 20th, 1969. Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. Pretty fancy, but they also have fictional ones of the future. And guess what the first dog in space was? The first dog to make it to space is a Dalmatian named Sunspot. I wish, I wish it was Gracie. Getting serious in here. <laughs> here are your assignments. Navigator. Navigator. Keep adjusting the pitch of the X2 if necessary and firing thrusters for your descent. Pilot, on my signal. These are so tight. It's like if you're claustrophobic, this is definitely a ride you don't want to ride. But it's all right. We got a good group of recruits here. You don't need it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I need it! <laughs> yes. Look at how tight this is. Your job will be to trigger first stage separation. And then this wall comes down on us too, you'll see. Surgeon, how are we doing? All good for launch. All good for launch. A reminder, Commander. Your assignments are to activate flight sequence. And for landing, activate manual control. Loading flight plan. All good. Engineer. Just a reminder, you will activate the flight cameras when we Oh boy! I tell you either. We got this! Hey, Commander! Commander! This is our team. Go well, control. Flight control on, pitch, yaw. Not touch. Deploy. Don't touch. We all have our assignments. Oh, I'm not ready. We have made it to start. Five, four, three, two, one. I feel a lot of pressure on my face. <laughs> wow, isn't she a beaut, Clark? <laughs> they're, they're very prepared. <laughs> Not for me! <laughs> that ride is a lot of fun. And the, the green one, like I didn't feel too much pressure, just a little bit. But it's always awesome when you get a group of people that just like kind of go with it. They play around and they make it like a mission. And that's what I had. I had a good group. 
the gift shop for Mission Space is really cool because they have a lot of like space food. But what's even cooler is they got Roosevelt shirts sold here at Epcot. Look at this. Roosevelt's one small step. Look at that. I am so happy to see this in the park now. Look at down here. There's another Roosevelt there too. How cool is that? I wanted to hop into the gift shop real quick to see if they got any cool Epcot merchandise. Uh, usually they have newer items coming out in the beginning of the month, especially with October. I'm not too sure if there's going to be any Halloween items, you know what I mean? Because I feel like that's been out for a while, but I bet you there's going to be Christmas. I've come across some really cool Epcot merchandise. They got an Epcot hat here. I don't know how much this is though. $29.99, but I really like the Spirit Jersey. I like the Spirit Jersey because it has Spaceship Earth on the front and the back. Ooh, I almost dropped it and then Epcot across the shoulders there. I guess we should start making our way out of the park. I think uh, it's set to close at nine o'clock, which is just an hour from now. But look at that, look how beautiful Spaceship is. Spaceship is, Spaceship Earth is. And I don't even know if they're doing a special show for the food and wine. Usually I like to stand out there and see, but maybe we'll get lucky when we walk by. I was gonna start making my way out, but I think Spaceship Earth is a walk-on. So I think I'm gonna go uh, ride Spaceship Earth. Also, I like how the lights just turned on. Uh, oh, they did it again! <laughs> Man, I'm feeling like really nostalgic for old Epcot today. Mission Space, now we're doing Spaceship Earth. I kind of like it. I should spend a day here just doing all the uh, older attractions. There's not that many left. This is the perfect ride to close out the night. A nice relaxing ride on Spaceship Earth. During your slow moving journey, your time machine will slowly rotate back. And you stop momentarily. Say cheese. We are alone, struggling to survive until we learn to communicate with one another. Now we can hunt as a team and survive together. Thank you. 
<laughs> what do I look like a grumpy gill? Yo, I can't get over the way this picture is making me look like a grumpy gill. Never far away. I'm glad that we got to ride Spaceship Earth. Today's been a nice relaxing day. I've been loving the weather. It's been nice and nice and cozy walking around uh, World Showcase. But now I think we're gonna leave for for real this time. <laughs> Course by course, one by one, scream and shout. Wow, I like how they have this playing over here. Come be our guest, be our guest, be our guest, please be our Oh, wow. Thank you. And with that, I think we are done here today. I had such a great day hanging out at Epcot. The weather was so beautiful. You know, they say the calm before uh, the calm before the storm. This is kind of like the calm after the storm. Like I honestly loved it. And it was great to get out of the house and walk around. And I'm sure it was the same thing for any of the hotel guests here at the Walt Disney World Resort. Uh, but thank you to anyone that was uh, checking in on me during the hurricane. I appreciate it so much. And uh, like. Like I said, my thoughts and prayers go out to anyone that was affected by it. It's kind of crazy how it was hitting in areas that a lot of people didn't expect. And uh, even here, I was shocked because where I live, I mean, I didn't get much damage. The screens blew out, like I said, and a couple of trees. Nothing like too, you know, in the bigger scheme of things, nothing too damaging that I can't just handle myself and fix. Uh, but down the road, uh, a 7-Eleven lost its whole entire sign and it flew into it like the Olive Garden parking lot. And I was like, dang, that was just right down the street. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I, I already said uh, about New York Comic Con, I'll be there next week, October 19th uh, at the Roosevelt's booth from, uh, I think it's 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And like I said, it doesn't cost anything i just read i just like to hang out with people so if you guys are there come by i'll be hanging out i love to talk to everybody and kind of just chit chat a little bit it's always cool when you get to meet people that watch the videos like watch my videos because you know for the longest time i was just out there walking around with a camera filming and uh like you don't know that there's so many people watching like you you see like the views and stuff like that but like until you meet people and they talk to you and they tell you like one of their favorite vlogs like it really it gets you like so excited and i i feel like that's why i love going to these cons because I, I i love to get to interact and talk with people that watch the videos and i get to hear like things that i've done and i i, I you know what i mean stuff like that i i i enjoy it a lot so if anybody uh, is at New York Comic Con want to come by, I'll be there. I'd love to say hi. And then also down the road, I got a really cool uh, another like meet and greet happening. And this one's going to be inside of a theme park. We're actually going to be doing the Orlando Informer meetup. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have like a little meet uh, meetup during the Informer at Universal Studios. I'm not too sure what uh, like the location is going to be yet. We're still trying to you know discuss it i think it's happening in november probably november 23rd for the orlando informer meetup but uh we're gonna have like a little get together so anybody that comes to the orlando informer meetup uh wants to come by and hang out with me I'm going to be there at Universal. It's going to be fun, but I'll keep you guys posted with uh, more uh, details on that uh, once me and uh, Taylor figure out uh, what we're going to do. Uh, and I love the Orlando Informer. I'll even have tickets too if you guys are in the area. It's tough because the Orlando Informer is like a separate ticketed event, but the whole park is rented out. You get all you can eat food. The rides have limited weights. And uh, it's just cool to be able to go there and hang out with uh, some people that maybe watch the videos uh, but I'll keep you guys posted on that so I hope you enjoyed the video I enjoyed making it and uh, we'll see you next time
बाय